Hello and welcome to Parker's Pit Stop. Today I have an Australian, which means he's been very hard to get hold of, but we finally got hold of him. Um, Australian who has actually just recently enjoyed a very good upturn of form in his sim racing career. His name is Thomas Hins. Hello, Tom. Hello, yes, as, yeah, as you said, it's a bit, but uh, we got there finally. Time zones are the worst, but we eventually got there, which is good. And uh, yeah, it should be fun. I think that this will uh, then if you get the, the park. Like a pit stop treatment finally, so yeah, I get to experience it myself. But yeah, and yeah, form, yeah, form has been has been going up, thankfully, which is good. So um, yes, but we'll see if that continues into the future. Fingers crossed. Absolutely, yes. Obviously, Super League is um, your main series. I know you from. Um, what other things are you going to be doing this year in the sim racing world? Oh well, I mean, it's all um, it's all a bit. It depends on, I guess, as with everybody, you know, we all, I guess, it all, we fit in where we can and in terms of, and, you know, and have to sort of shape it around what else we're doing, uh, IRL. Um, but I've been a bit, I guess it's just go with the flows at the moment. Probably RF2-wise, obviously, SL, continue doing that if I can. Um, so it's a lot of fun, even though I know uh, it's it's a bit, uh, some people doesn't quite work with them as well as maybe it has in the last in past years um but it seems to work for me so i got no plans of stopping um in that one um outside of that probably uh obviously sim racing dog club probably uh, i'm thinking i might do next season of vc whenever that comes around uh which i'm guessing will be late this year when they do the new season so i'll probably do that again despite how um <laughs> bad luck written uh, my season over there has been with uh, Dennis Jordan. Me and him have been doing that, and that's been uh, frustrating. But you know, still fun because endurance. Um, really, all sorts. I'm. I could. I probably. I could explain them all, but it'd probably take about twenty minutes of its own just to say them all. <laughs> um, uh, but I have been doing a bit of uh, eye racing recently with the V8 supercars because it seems to me that about ninety-five percent of the Aussie sim racing community is in eye racing at the moment because everyone, all of them are just racing V8s or GT3s. So, so I've been doing a bit of V8s. So that's been fun. It's been good to do you know, some races that are actually um, not at like four in the morning my time. So yeah, that's been fun. Um, so yeah, I guess just um, all sorts. I guess is the is the basic answer, but probably. RF2 and maybe a bit of iRacing currently, but we'll see. Maybe the odd AMS League as well, depending on you know what's on offer. Um, if RD do some more of those, I'll probably do them as well. Lovely. So you're starting to get around a little bit. Obviously, I think if I remember rightly, you started in GPWC, if I'm correct. Yeah. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how you found the league and how you started off in there? Um, yeah, well, I guess it was, I think it was mid-2014, I believe it was, if memory serves. Um, and I think I'd, I'd have been playing uh, R-Factor 1 just on my own, um, with a lot of, you know, just various mods and all that kind of thing, uh, on my uh, crappy quality laptop um, that could barely run at the FPS sometimes. Um, oh, it's stable 30 FPS anyway. Uh, and I've been mucking around with all various mods there. Obviously, V8 is probably primarily from memory, but it was, you know, Aussie, just the way it goes. Um, and uh, saw GPV, you know, I've been watching um, Thomas Jacobs, of course, who used to do his recordings of GPV races and all that. Um, or still does them, of course, but um, used to do them for the touring cars and all that. I sort of um, watched them, was sort of aware of GPV through him and a few others. Uh, so I just thought, yeah, I'll go and have a look. And, you know, I've been sort of wanting to get into that a little bit, um, you know, and sort of months before, so I thought I'd have a go. Um, and, yeah, got on to the, uh, got on, I think I just went on the practice server at the time, just sort of signed up, tried out the ITC mod um with the crappy <laughs> barely force feedback that was like the most basic force feedback ever it was like just yeah it was very inaccurate but um it was a wheel that's the main thing um use that and uh yeah just went around um and i think it was jo and josh josh anderson of course who you know pretty prominent in the sim racing community these days himself um yeah, sort of saw me, I think, lapping around. I think I put, I think I remember I put in the forums about wanting to do a drive if I could, and then he offered to give me a go. And that was pretty much how I started with good old Cosmo in the BM, in the ITC, that infamous BM of that year that, uh, yeah, wasn't terribly quick. But um, I found out later, it turned out that one of my, because uh, uh, this, this wheel had the, Pe uh, pedals on the side like paddles, but they were used as throttle and brakes. There wasn't even any pedals in this. It was just a wheel combo. Um, and I found out that the throttle one, Later on, this is much later on, but 
later on it was I found out that it wasn't actually always full throttle, which is why I think my pace struggled a lot more than it actually really was in those early early uh, early months. Really, it took me that long to realise um, the racing. I kept wondering why I was slow sometimes by so much, and I think that was why. Um, and so yeah, <laughs> there you go. So yeah, that was uh, how I started, and uh, yeah, I went from there, of course. So of course, because of that, uh, you know, GPV is, is I guess. Is is for me anyway is sort of home um, in terms of sim racing because you know obviously where I started and you know where I knew you know the likes of Jay, Tom Jacobs and obviously uh, Chuggy you know, Chuggy from watching their stuff before really all that crew all the TSA boys and all that um, sort of watched their stuff on YouTube uh, not just sim racing but other stuff so you know came in through there and uh, yeah started doing that and then started to sort of spread out after a while from that I guess once I sort of got comfortable and uh, got a, a decent setup going <laughs> so yeah. Lovely stuff. So it's quite a so not not been racing for too long then, so nearly three years now, so not too long, but like I said, you now start to branch out and that's really, really good. I think that's what makes sim racing. You can just jump into one series from another and ping around, like you said, you've gone into VEC as well recently, and all of those other leagues like sim racing. Um what um so obviously you said you're Australian, like I said, time zones can be a bit of a pain in the uh in your in your case. How do you cope? How do you cope with that? Like, obviously, having to wake up at 4 a.m. for races must not be easy. How do you cope? Well, it's, yeah, it sort of depends. Because, unfortunately, for me, um, I've always had, it's always been a thing for me um, that I'm trying to rectify, but I do still struggle sometimes with it. Uh, sleeping pattern, my sleeping pattern has been, has always been bad. I've never been good with getting up early, um, really, and I uh, still do struggle with it, unfortunately, but I'm trying to get better with it, if I can, as, you know, slowly but surely, progress as you go, but, um, uh, yeah, I guess it's a bit of a race by way of spaces half the time, because uh, sometimes if I can, I, I'll try and get, obviously, some sleep before, and if I can, you know, try and get to bed a bit earlier and get some sleep. Um, sometimes it doesn't happen. Sometimes, you know, I, I go to bed and I just know I'm not going to get sleep. I know my mind's just too active, or I, just, I can just tell it's not going to come. Um, and I have actually had times where I've sat there, you know, for six hours or whatever trying to get to sleep and then it just hasn't happened and then it comes around to that time and I'm like, well, <laughs> I guess I'm just racing like this. So, um, yeah, so it's it's a bit, yeah, it depends on the on the situation, I guess. Um, but, yeah, it definitely makes it uh, difficult because, um, you know, it can mean that a lot of the time I'm probably not quite at the peak that I uh, could be at. You know, I'm sort of a bit tired or a bit you know, mentally just not really in a positive mindset, you know, struggling to get to sleep or whatever. Um, so it can affect, I think, performance sometimes. Um, and then obviously the aftermath, of course, if things go wrong, it can sort of affect it that way, which I think is why I've always struggled a little bit with that whole thing of, you know, of taking on failures or non-good results well I think because you know especially when you get up like when you have to put so much into it like I do with the time zone with a lot of them all of them of course but a lot of the races it's just I guess you put naturally without realizing you put that extra expectation that you know, for it going well and there's that extra knock on of it not going well because you're like oh bloody I you know, took my sleep and pattern out of, out of whack or I woke up so early to do this and it still failed and it just yeah it just gets you a bit more I've found but I think I'm getting better with it. Um, slow, again, slow but surely. It's all slowly sort of um, been a process to get used to it. Um, and uh, I think I am definitely much better now than I used to be. I used to be um, not terribly good with it, but I think um, certainly improved. Um, hopefully just improved further uh, as time goes on. Fingers crossed, um, you know, get a bit more of a schedule going with these rates. Excuse me. Wow, that was a little bit escaping. Classy Australian in action. Um, but, yeah, hopefully I'll get a bit of a a uh, sort of schedule deal going on with that um, a bit more than I do at the moment. But as I say, it's getting better, so it's a bit short. That's good. I mean, I mean, I know you've had a, a reputation in the past of not waking up and going, oh, for goodness sake, Tom, why have you not woken up? But then obviously, <laughs> you're Australian. It's like, it's going to happen. I know I know another um, Australian friend of mine, William Tringas, and he's, he's done it before as well. He's not woken up and he's gone, well, why would I? It's, it's 4 a.m. Why would I wake up at 4 a.m. or something good that I don't need to do in a way? But I mean, I'm glad to hear that it's getting better. And um, obviously, you must have got some good, pretty good sleep last night, uh, the other night when uh, Super League came around, because you got sixth place, which is your best position ever, I think, in GPWC Super League. How how's that? I mean, where's that pace sort of come from? <laughs> um, yeah, it was pretty crazy. It was it was great though that race, as I mentioned in the uh, post race broadcast, a uh, post race interview. It was uh, it was great fun uh, during it because we actually had three, basically had three race engineers. It was fantastic. Me and me and Jeffrey didn't have to 
do any strategy. We just basically drove and then we just say, look, what are you, you know, where are we doing? And then they just go, look, do bang. And then we'd be like, all right, cool. And we just, you know, go to wherever the plan was. It was fantastic um, to have. Uh, there was a little confusion at one point with uh, me because I've, uh, for whatever reason, I don't know what it is, but for whatever reason, the ultra softs just work really well with me. And obviously, anyone who's GB oriented, which probably most people watching this, um, probably know the higher sensitivities of the SL mod. Obviously, it's uh, different <laughs> views on that. Bit of a hotly debated topic, but um, for whatever reason, the ultra softs um, work really well with me. I don't know what it is exactly, whether it's just my style, like I, I'm the sort of I'm able to sort of balance them on the edge of group without overheating them or something like that. I'm not sure, but um, for whatever reason, they just work really well for me, even in race trim, because um, the last two races, Valencia and uh, Austria, was uh, I just used Ultrasofts for most of the race, and then I only put the Super Softs on because I had to. And when I put them on, they didn't really feel too good. I just couldn't get them to work as well as the Ultrasofts. And I still don't know why. I still don't know. I mean, maybe I'm not pushing the SSs as hard. I'm, I'm not sure, but... Um, but yeah, it's it's shocked me, shocked me. But it was it was great fun, great to be up there again. Um, I know at Russia, at Russia, I sort of was in amongst that as well until Gogo had the glitch with the game and uh, sent my car flying like an aeroplane about a good twenty meters or so in the air. But um, yeah, it's good to get you know be up there legitimately. You know, I was legitimately within you know range of the likes of Gergo and and Lee, and of course they're absolutely no slouches. So. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not entirely sure where it came from. I don't know. I guess I used to do enough of it, and you get good at. It, I guess um, I don't know. I think RF2. I've got many hours clocked on. Um, and it's certainly my my sim of choice. Uh, so I think yeah, just I guess just um, maybe the mindset, as I said, maybe just sort of getting a bit more of a better mindset these days uh, has helped, and maybe just getting a better style. You know, better style of how I race. You know, it just uh, makes a good mix of not taking it too hard on myself but not you know absolutely no you know too relaxed sort of a nice middle ground for me um but yeah it seems to me the ssl mod um works quite well uh in for my style um so whether there's something in that i'm not sure but um yeah no it was very good very good and uh it's certainly an sl as i've said i think i've said on other you know, in other post race interviews and that, you know, really great series. Probably my favourite just because it, it's, I just love the racing style, those longer sort of races. They seem to suit me. Um, and uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun, a lot of fun. It was, it was only the, it was all pretty much perfect almost, almost, almost a perfect race, except for, uh, I think it was after the first stop I came out, yeah, in a bit of a pack there with the two SRSs and uh, one of the storms, and it got a little bit, a little bit feisty, a little bit close to things going wrong. It was a little bit scary, um, but yeah, no, it was, it was a bit of a pleasant surprise of mine. I think I'm still sort of coming to terms with actually being with, you know, Gergo and stuff, and actually being close-ish to them on pace. Uh, genuinely, it's a, it's a weird feeling because they're just like alien in my book and like another level up so yeah it's a bit of a shock but um fingers crossed to continue on to uh monaco although i wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't because i'm not a fan of monaco at all i'm i really don't like the tracks so <laughs> it's gonna be uh, i'm not sure if i'm dreading it excited a bit of both i'm not really sure it's just gonna be an experience uh for the next round i think Absolutely. And, <clears throat> I mean, when I spoke to Gergo, I think where well, a lot of, bit of this comes into it as well. Some people suit better sims, some people suit better mods. And maybe this is just a mod for you that you just suit. I mean, I, I personally find R Factor 1 a bit easier on me because I'm very, very hard on tyres. I find that easier than R Factor 2, so I've struggled a bit in the transition. But then someone like you, for example, absolutely relishes it because you've gone from, from some middle loop packy, middle loop pack to by the top, like you said. I mean, Gergo and Lee, like you said, no slouches at all. And um, now you're racing them. It's um, it must be feeling pretty, pretty good to be doing that. So it's good. It's good that you're starting to rise up in the way, and hopefully, you no know, podiums. Maybe would that be a aim for this year, or are you not going to take too far and just aim for where you are now? Um, yeah, no. Look, if I could podium, that'd be amazing. I'd, I'd love that. Um, I don't know if, yeah, I'm not sure. I'll see, yeah, it's a bit of a tough one to call, isn't it? Because I mean, Rudy's obviously he's he's sort of dominating at this point, and there's just so many other guys in that area you know like Gergo, like risto you know lee as well of course especially if they get that car sort of a bit more sorted out and there's even other guys in there that you know if they have a good car or a decent car and they have the right sort of scenario they could be right up there as well so it's yeah i don't know about podium i mean top five like a just more top fives a couple more top fives would be great i'd love that um but yeah podiums yeah i'll see podium is the ultimate goal i guess but 
I'm not uh, placing any bets on it because, um, yeah, I don't think as I've and I've well, I've sort of mentioned it to myself more than anyone else, but um, it's I know I'm not. I have mentioned a few people. I'm not. I don't think I'm anyway. Just by the way, I've, I've looked at. I've sort of looked at my laps and other sims and just general data, and I, it's in my mind it kind of supports what what I think I'm like is that I know I'm not because I'm not good at qualifying. As if you look at the SL this year, not good at qualifying. I most of it because I don't really practice for qualifying. My mind's always on the race. I don't really give much time to quality because I just sort of think, well, you know, race is where it's at. Quality is just a bit of a sideshow. Gaff change for Monaco because it's Monaco. Obviously, in passing is near impossible there, so probably gonna have to actually focus on qualifying quite a lot so that'll be interesting um but i think for me is i'm always i mean usually my strength is consistency um with solid laps i think so not not lightning fast but just solid laps you know they're sort of there or thereabouts and i'm just able to bang them out pretty consistently and apparently looking after the tires in sl because uh, at rbr i was pushing the ultras for like 11 12 laps a stint so you know <laughs> how i don't know i think i was again i was probably just juggling the balance between pace and and making them last well i guess again it must just suit me but um yeah i that's sort of where my strength is it's just not being lightning fast but just consistent sold laps um i think that's reflected in lap times i do in races and just generally how it all sort of pans out at my end um you know for me a bit of a comparison is that when jeffrey obviously came in jeffrey fournier came in for us for the two races um I think he was Jim. I reckon on pace he was quicker than I was. He was quicker on pace than I was, even though he had less time in the car than me. Um, but I was just a little bit more consistent, and I could look after the tyres a bit more, which is where I sort of uh, got the strength back in that area. Um, so yes, yeah, so but I don't know. I don't think I quite have enough of that raw pace. Um, to challenge for a podium, certainly not to Rudy. I don't think to Risto either when things obviously go right, or even still to Gergo and, and and the like of those guys. I think I'm not quite there, even in the SL mod that seems to suit me. Um, but you know, we'll see. I mean, if hopefully, given the right circumstances, and obviously Monaco, you know, Monaco is Monaco, so who knows? That might even be the, the circumstance. But I think if I can get the right sort of set of circumstances, maybe a podium. Maybe, but yeah, I'm certainly not putting any bets on it. But hell, if I get a podium, I'd be. I think I'd just be like, you know what? I don't really care how the rest of the season goes. I've uh, I've achieved the ultimate goal in my mind, so I'm happy. <laughs> well, that's good. I mean, if you're happy, and why why complain? I mean, now you've got a pressure off your shoulders, I suppose. That'll help you, help you, like maybe even get it faster, like you said in Monaco. Well, Monaco's Monaco. You never know what's going to happen there. So, who knows what happens in Monaco? So. You are a driver, of course, and mainly for Red Archer as well in Super League, but you also have your own team, Hins Motorsport. What will they be doing this year? What What is Hins going to be doing this year in terms of driving and leagues? Ooh, well, yeah, it's um, yeah, it's all it's all been a bit because I've been um, obviously I've got trying to balance life stuff not very well and other things and you know i'm not i'm probably not the most organized person which always makes it a bit interesting for me obviously being leading the dc at gbv and doing my own team makes it interesting because i'm probably not quite as structured i well not structured but just i don't think i guess str playing things out in a sort of long-term structured manner i guess i don't do that probably enough uh as i am that's something i'm trying to improve as well um but I guess for the team, I guess just it's always been for me with them, especially uh, since last year. Because WSS last year, we just had the worst time with drivers. We could not, and obviously flat six. Well, at that point, was kind of kind of not really well liked, and people were starting to get a bit past it. And there was sort of a dying mod anyway, so the series kind of slowly petered out. But even so, it was very hard trying to find drivers, and we're constantly having to change and look for more people and. Um, Excuse me. We had um, a big kudos always. I always thought to David Young, of course, and uh, a very well-known figure in GPVWC. Um, you know, he drove for us for quite a while, and even though I remember he was saying he uh, he's saying he didn't like the mod at one point, saying I'm not really loving, I can drive in it, and he still kept going for it. But I just said, so I didn't look, you know, I'm not going to force you. So if you don't like it, don't you know, <laughs> don't don't feel like you have to do it. Um, so yeah, but uh, ever since then, especially uh, of my main thing for the team is just having drivers who commit. You know, it's my main thing. I mean, you don't have to be that. For my in my mind, pace night's great, but if people aren't turning up, then it doesn't matter how quick someone is. You know, it's not going to matter when they don't turn up. There's no points or, or or you know a lack of an entry at each race. So I guess for us, especially with SC, is trying to keep a you know keep a good. Um, 
the tennis right going. Obviously, we had uh, weeks in at the start there. He approached me uh, before the season and uh, said he wanted to drive, and I didn't. I didn't have any. I, well, I think I had one driver at the point at that time, and I didn't really have any other options um, at the time. So I just went, well, if you've come to me, then sure. Um, of course, he's since stopped doing a C, so we've uh, brought in Wesley Stefano though, which is good. Um, so he's, I know he's, he's a great guy, and he's and we get on really well, and he's really committed. So uh, he should hopefully be good for the for the season. Um, I think he's there's a few contractual things to do there, but you know once they're all, all good, he should be good to go. Um, and yeah, I think Sandy, of course, Sandy, you know, great, um, great driver in his own right. And he's been making the transition to RF2 because obviously he's uh, just recently got a PC that can do it. So it's been a bit of a transitional phase for him. Um, but it's good to finally get to uh, or to get a good sort of lineup going there um, uh, after after Jordan um, wanted to wanted to stop going after Valencia. So um, yeah, hopefully that's all good. So SC, I guess, just finish off SC. And I think we'll stay in SC next year. I'm probably already, you know, just that's in my mind. That's already how it is because we've only, we only did like three, I think half or three calls of the season in FC. So um, I think we probably need to do one or two, probably two seasons SC before I'd be looking at going SL because um, I'd have no idea how to build a car either. So, so that would, I would have no idea what I'm doing. So it'd probably be a good thing that we have a bit of time in SC um, so that maybe then when we do go to SL, I can actually, if we do, if, big, big if, but if we do, then I have a vague idea of what I'm doing. Fingers crossed with uh, actually building the cars. Um, outside of that, uh, we've been doing the WCS as well um, over there with Sven and Co. We've uh, entered. We were in the BMWs for the season. There actually went pretty well. Actually, we had some good results there, which is great. Uh, I'd be curious to the guys for driving over there, Roy and uh, and Wesley. That was really good. Obviously, especially Roy Verja, he was um, really really great uh, coming in when we uh, lost the driver. He came in and just drove for the season, which has been fantastic. Um, yeah, and then we do have a bit at Sim League as well, but um, it's been sort of a bit of a waning, uh, I guess, motivation with that one. So I think for us, it'll be focus on GPV uh, and maybe WECS as well. We might enter into the McGanns or something because uh, I know they've got two more series, new ones coming up, so we might enter in the McGanns or something like that. Um, but yeah, probably just those two really. We sort of, I'm trying to, I think for me, it's about keeping it. Small enough so that I can actually manage it, you know, well, <laughs> rather than trying to spread out and then having and just losing control and losing motivation that way, um, like I probably did a little bit earlier on. So um, I'll just keep it to those two, I think, for the moment. Um, and yeah, and I guess for us the goal is to get to SL, of course, um, and uh, hopefully do well there. Um, so I think that's probably our aim for the future, I guess, for the team. Lovely stuff. So <clears throat> I think we'll just leave it there. Thank you very much. Tom for uh, coming to join. Like I said, we got there eventually, and it was a really, really good interview actually. So thank you very much for that. No worries at all. Thank you for having me on, Tom. No problem. So that was uh, Thomas Hins on Parker's Pit Stop in association with SimNews.tv. Um, this will be going up on Monday, of course, as per usual. If you want any more information on other shows for our SimNews.tv schedule, go on to SimNews.tv on Facebook, and you can see more there. Thank you very much. I've been Thomas Parker and I will see you in two weeks time. Thank you.